And what else would you like to argue about? Yeah, we want to talk about toothbrushes and so on, and safe uh, and secure, Your Honor, I'd be happy certified, if, confined. I mean, what do you want to talk about? <laughs> <laughs> there are so many things, Your Honor. I, I was planning to address the CBP issues, but I, I, I'm... The which I, issues? I'm sorry? The Customs and Border Protection, which is CBP. That, that's the conditions okay. in the CBP facilities. Right. Okay, but you're really going to stand up and tell us that, that being able to sleep isn't a question of safe and sanitary conditions? Your Honor, I think what I'd like to what I'd like to stand up and say, really say is that. to focus <laughs> is to focus the court on um, uh, what what the question is here in this appeal, and that is this is this is a, a, a consent decree, and it is focused on the fo the language, the four corners of the language in the consent decree. And what what I what I do want to note is that what the court what the district court looked at was not asking the question. Was you know is there a violation of the language of the consent decree, and is 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 this an overall violation of what the parties intended to prohibit it in the in the consent decree? That's not the the district court instead looked at it from a different angle. The district court looked first: was there a violation of CBP's own TED standards? Well, I'm not sure she did that first, and I'm not sure that the TED standards really all that different from the more general statement or category or requirement of the agreement. Yeah, yes, the TED's standard is more detailed, but that sounds to me as it could quite easily come under the more general category of safe, safe and secure. Well. Your Honor, safe, safe and sanitary. Sorry, uh, and and that's any number of things might fall under those categories, and I think yes, I, but can... but sleep surely does, right? You can't be safe and 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 sanitary or safe as a human being if you can't sleep. Well, and and you said in your briefs it doesn't say anything about sleeping, so therefore um, there's nothing in here about being able to sleep. I think the concern there is, Your Honor, the court it, finding that sleep, for example, falls under is relevant to a finding of, of no safe and sanitary conditions it is one thing. But the ultimate conclusion is, is safe and sanitary is a singular category in the agreement, and it was it was one has to assume left that way and not enumerated by the parties because either the parties couldn't reach agreement on how to enumerate that or that it was left to the agencies to, deter to determine or really. Or it was relatively obvious, uh, and it's at least obvious enough so that if you're putting to people into a crowded room to sleep on a concrete floor with an aluminum foil blanket on top of them, that doesn't comply with the agreement. I mean, it may be that they don't get super thread counts Egyptian linens. I get that. But the testimony that the district judge believed was it's really cold. In fact, it gets colder when we complain about it as being cold. We're supposed to sleep crowded with the lights on all night long. Uh, and all you do put us on is the concrete floor with an aluminum blanket. I mean, I understand it's some outer boundary. There may be some definitional difficulty. But no one would argue that this is secure and sanitary, safe, safe and sanitary. Or at least I don't think you're arguing that, are you? Your Honor, I think what I'm arguing is that, that the, the way that the district court reached the conclusion was to say these, these specific items. And, and I, I think I, I will acknowledge I think sleep is, is the more difficult end of what I'm arguing. Um, we, I, we actually have a, an opinion that says that it's unconstitutional to um, uh, for make homeless people not sleep, right? So. Uh, uh, correct, Your Honor. And, and I think, I mean, I do know, and I think that's part of our, our point, though, is that we're, we're not talking about the constitutional standard here, and we're not talking about what, what CBP has implemented more broadly as its own TED's policy. We're talking about... Are you, but are you arguing seriously that you do not read the agreement as requiring you to do something other than what I've just described, cold all night long, lights on all night long, sleep on the concrete, and you get an aluminum foil blanket? Are you saying that that's and okay? And to the lie down, which they also said. I, think I, what, I find that inconceivable that the government would say that that is safe and sanitary. I think what I'm arguing, Your Honor, is that I, I don't believe that the district court made the finding in the way that Your Honor just, well, just the, detailed uh, it. Everything I just said comes right out of the district court order. I think... The, our concern is that the district court really looked at a condition, looked at, and, and, and again, as I said, I think sleep is, 
is is clearly at the at the at the sort of one end of of her findings i think we also so look which at which is your strongest argument then on <laughs> Well, I, I mean, I think what I would go to is the, when you start enumerating, for example, specific hygiene items. And, I, and the way that was done is that the, the court in, sort of enumerated these and say these fall under the rubric, these fall in the category well, of what could be required. Again, it wasn't perfume soap. It was soap. <laughs> it wasn't, you know, high-class milled soap. It was soap. And that sounds, no, that's part of uh, safe and sanitary. Are, are, you, are you disagreeing with that? I'm, what I'm disagreeing with is that the court, the court ultimately concluded these things would fall under here, and then simply by not providing them, you have violated that, that tenet of the agreement. And I, I also would note that the, in that per well, particular... Well, what do you... Granted that the decree you know, doesn't have a list of items that has to be supplied in order to be sanitary. Uh, uh, What's a reasonable, in your eyes, what's a reasonable uh, definition of sanitary that the court could enforce? Well, I think what I would ask is, uh, what I would say is the court, I would ask that the court find that, that the conditions were not safe and sanitary. What the court found is these things fall within that category, and by not providing them, that's an automatic breach of the agreement. Well, it's and, not, I don't know if it's automatic, but... To me, it's more like, as Judge Fletcher says, it's within everybody's common understanding that, you know, if you don't have a toothbrush, if you don't have soap, if you don't have a blanket, it's not safe and sanitary. Well, wouldn't everybody agree to that? You, do you agree to that? Well, I, I think it's, I think those are, there's fair reason to find that those things may be part of safe no, and sanitary. No, maybe, are a part. What do you say, maybe? You mean there are circumstances when a person doesn't need to have a toothbrush, toothpaste, and soap for days? Well, I think in CBP custody, there's frequent, it's frequently intended to be much shorter term. So it may be that for a shorter term stay in CBP custody that some of those things may not be required. Yeah, but I don't think that was the situation that the court was confronting. I mean, it wasn't right. as though those people were there for 12 hours and then moved on to the Hilton Hotel. No, they were there for a fairly, fairly sustained period. And at least according to the evidence that the judge believed, they weren't getting these things for a fairly sustained period. Well, I do want to clarify that the judge did find that in Ursula, in one of the CBP facilities, that many of those things were, Correct. were uh, present. Right. Right. And that the evidence did show that, that minors spent a much shorter period of time. There was only a small percentage of minors who weren't moved to Ursula very quickly. So just quickly. to clarify, at some point in your brief, you appear to be saying that safe and sanitary has no independent meaning and that the, the following, the de there's another sentence that follows it that has some details and that's the only thing you're required to do. I don't understand you to be arguing that now. Is that correct? That's what your brief said. Right? Your, your brief seemed to say that safe and sanitary had no independent meaning. I don't think it has no independent meaning, and, and if that's the impression our argument gave, I, 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 I apologize. I think that the position is more generally that to impose specific, specific enumerated meanings that are not contained in the agreement it, without, in fact, reaching the ultimate question of were the conditions overall in, in general, as a general matter, safe and sanitary is not, is not a correct finding of breach. No, but you see, uh, under that approach, if the district court were to conclude no, they were not sanitary, and all it could do, all it could do is say fix it, they can tell you what to do, right? They can say you have to provide it soap. They just, all, all they can do is issue an order saying make it sanitary, that, right? I mean, that's... Oh, that's I mean, what that's, these, that's what the details are there for. Aren't, isn't, that the, isn't that the purpose, to, to, to give a concrete meaning to the term? I think... I mean, you know, if, if CPB uh, got an order saying, you know, we want your, we want your uh, facilities to be sanitary, they say, fine, we'll make them sanitary. But, you know, I mean, who, who knows what sanitary is? And I think that then goes to whether the, uh, to what level the agreement could be enforceable. It's well, this so you, well, that's part of what I'm getting. So you're saying maybe the, the agreement is so vague that it's unenforceable. That's almost your argument, isn't it? 
To some extent, yes, Your Honor. I think that, that if, the, if the term in the agreement requires an after, after agreement interpretation by the district right. court, then, then yes, that, that does constitute a vague term that, that the parties didn't su sufficiently clarify in reaching agreement. You know, let's